what's up everybody welcome back to my channel i hope you're having a fabulous day as you can tell by the title of this video i am finally sitting down to give you the lowdown on my botox experience so as many of you will know i got botox about two weeks ago now actually two weeks and one day ago i got it in my forehead i got it in my frown lines and i also got it around my eyes here just to deal with those crow's feet many of you will have seen the vlog that i did so i am going to refer back Back to pieces of that so I can kind of explain a little bit better what I'm talking about so it makes more sense for you. So let's start off with probably the biggest question people have. Why on earth did I decide to get Botox? I'm 23, it sounds like a little bit of a mad thing to do. The biggest reason for me why I decided to get Botox was not because I disliked anything about myself, but rather because I could see things that I wasn't completely happy with. And I realized that I actually had the power to change that. And if somebody has the power to change something they don't like, more power to them. It was to make myself feel better about these wrinkles that were appearing in my forehead. And they were appearing because I am an extremely expressive person. If you know me in person or if you watch my videos, you know that I'm always talking, my hands are always going this way. I was developing serious frown lines. And it was also as a result of many years of concentration and looking at a screen. So for anybody who's not familiar or who's new to my videos, I did law uh, for my undergraduate degree and then I went on to do a master's in law. So throughout those five years of heavily research-based, screen-based work, I was finding myself staring at the screen with a crinkled up forehead, shoulders up here, really intensely concentrating, and as a result I was developing wrinkles. And we actually noticed that my dad does the exact same thing, so I definitely got it from him. And the third reason that I really wanted to get it was because I actually knew people who had got it done and I was extremely happy with the results that they had. So I had learned that if I got Botox early enough, I could actually reverse some of the wrinkles that I already had and I could prevent future ones from forming. So basically the Botox works to prevent the movement in your face. So if you can't move certain muscles, you can't create those fine lines because it is movement that creates those lines. So let's get into the procedure a little bit more and how that worked kind of from start to finish. So as I mentioned, I got this done about two weeks ago now, and I chose the therapist that did my Botox based on the experiences of a close friend of mine who had also got it done. She was very happy with her results. She knew the professional very, very well. The clinic was very well accredited. So I felt really comfortable knowing that I was going to a good place to get this done. You can of course do it on the cheap, but personally, I feel like if you're going to get a procedure like this done, you need to go to somewhere that is very well respected the people are highly qualified professionals and good at what they do and i think what really really swayed it for me was talking to one of my close friends who had got it done and was so happy with her results and i could see her she was standing in front of me i could look at her face and talk to her about her experience and that really is what swayed my decision so if you can find somebody then all the better if not make sure you do your research well online give the clinic a call go and have a consultation with them beforehand make sure you are totally totally happy so the day of the consultation arrived and to be honest, I hadn't given a whole ton of thought to the procedure itself. Obviously Botox is done with needles and personally I am incredibly afraid of vaccinations and injections of that nature, anything kind of medically related. But for some reason, cosmetic injections don't seem to bother me at all. I wasn't afraid of the needle and in fact it's so tiny. So for me the needle aspect didn't really bother me. I mean I've had piercings done, I think it's just the whole vaccinations side of things I'm a bit like no stay over there but I arrived in for my appointment on the day filled out some medical information about myself and before I knew it I was sitting in front of the lady that was going to do my Botox I'm not gonna lie I was a bit nervous I think that it was just because mom was holding the camera and I wasn't totally sure what to expect it was a little bit nerve-wracking so let's just call this lady Linda just to make everything a little bit easier for everybody so when I went in and met Linda she held up a giant mirror in front of my face and she asked me to tell her what I was really unhappy with and what I would hope to change from the procedure so as you can see from the clip here I was showing her my frown lines I was showing her my really crinkly forehead and also the crow's feet around my eyes were areas that I was becoming increasingly unhappy with as the years are rolling on. <laughs> And she totally understood. Actually, she even pointed out that Botox could help with a dent that I had developed in my head. It is a long, long story as to how I ended up with that dent. Let's just say there was a couple of glasses of wine, a metal pole, and a mobile phone. 
actually it really has you can't even see it now it was in this area here and so once we pinpointed the areas that I really wanted to kind of tackle she asked me how much movement I still wanted to have for me I am obviously very expressive so I didn't want to look completely crazy or completely frozen so she told me to lie back and make a number of different uh, facial expressions and movements like frowning, smiling, and she marked out the areas where she was going to put the Botox before she actually went near my face with the needle. So that was, again, another comforting relief. She wasn't just taking a needle and going ch -ch -ch into my head completely randomly. So after marking out the area, she told me that the needle itself was going to feel like a little bit of a scratch and that I might feel the sensation of the Botox in my skin for a couple of minutes after it was injected. The needle itself was tiny. I can honestly say that as far as pain went, I really didn't feel it in my forehead at all. It wasn't painful. I could feel it happening because of course it's a needle and naturally you're going to feel something when it enters your skin but it wasn't sore. I think the soreness came the closer that we moved towards my eyes. So the closer we moved towards the frown lines and around my eyes here, around the crow's feet area, it did get a little bit painful. Now it's nothing that you can't handle. It was sort of a sharp, scratchy, uncomfortable feeling where you almost pull away from it, but it's nothing too extreme. Overall, the eye area is extremely sensitive anyway. So if, even if you go pushing or prodding or pinching at your skin, you feel it more in that area than you do in other areas. One of my lovely friends, Roisin, actually asked in the comments on my vlog, was there any mention of a numbing cream or anything that maybe if you're very sensitive that they could apply to your face? And there was no mention of a numbing cream. Now, I don't know if that's because they don't typically do it for Botox injections or because I actually hadn't brought it up. So I would say if you're very sensitive or if you're afraid of needles, you should have a chat with the person that's going to do your procedure with that clinic and see if they have a sort of a numbing rub that they could use. That's not uncommon for procedures, so it might be something to look into if you're a little bit apprehensive. I can't remember how many injections all in all I ended up getting, but I'm sure it's on the vlog somewhere. But in this clip here, you can see exactly where the needles went in. And there was a small bit of blood, but I didn't feel anything and I didn't even know this was happening. It was only when I watched the vlog footage back that I realized that there was a small bit of blood. So again, nothing to phase you. The Botox itself feels a little bit strange in the skin. So when you get a vaccination, it's like you can feel the vaccine for a second and then it kind of dissipates into your arm. But this stays there for, I think it was about 15 minutes it actually stayed that sensation of there being something in my skin and a little tingling feeling, but it didn't last. By the time I got in the car, it was completely gone. But I just thought it was so interesting that I could feel where these areas of Botox had been injected into my skin. So I was very aware after I got the procedure done of the side effects that I could have experienced and thankfully my side effects I wouldn't say were too severe but I did have some so I did go home with a feeling of heaviness in my head but I think that was just purely from the trauma of getting injections into your skin but later on in the day that developed into a cloudy heavy headache it wasn't something that was debilitating but I noticed that it was there and of course I mentioned this in the vlog that I was trying to be really really hyper aware of everything that I was feeling so that I could relay it back to you exactly how I felt it and I'm going to give it to you straight here that headache lasted for I would say the first week and I also did experience a fairly severe bruise on I, I can't even remember now I think it was the left side of my face again Linda had noticed that while she was doing the procedure that area had become incredibly sensitive so she did say that you're likely to have a bruise there and it depends on the person as to how quickly that goes away that was gone for me after the first 10 days as well I am clearly a slow healer my eyelids also felt like they were closed all the time and, <laughs> and they weren't, they really weren't. They were wide open, they were completely normal, but it felt like they were down here. That's the only way I could describe it. It felt like I was walking around with my eyelids on the floor. And the last thing that I know about the week afterwards was that I did experience some swelling. So Danny noticed when he looked at me after getting it done the day after that the left side of my face where the bruise was actually was slightly more inflamed than the right side. But I did have a tiny bit of swelling. You know, even if you touch your forehead, if you have a little lump or bump, you can feel the swelling in that area. That's kind of how it felt all over. But again, that's completely gone. Went away after the first 10 days. So I also had a question about whether there's any kind of a skincare regime or upkeep regime that you need to do after Botox to make it more effective. And in terms of skincare, there isn't anything that's recommended. You would just use your typical SPF, avoid the sun, wear sunglasses where you can, all that usual stuff. In terms of helping it to last longer, you shouldn't exercise in the 24 hours 
after you get the Botox done and that is because the Botox needs to settle into the skin. It needs to be given time because it will move. If you go rubbing at the area, if you go doing some vigorous exercise that requires you to sweat and wipe away sweat and rub your face, then that Botox is going to migrate to a different area of your face that you do not want it to migrate to. So the simple solution is to just not poke or prod or push at your face for the 24 hours minimum after you get the procedure done and also not to do any kind of intense or vigorous exercise. I think I left it about 36 hours before I started doing any running or gymming again and I really was very careful not to touch my face. That's not to scare you, that's just to be realistic. Also to note that it should last about four to six months depending on the person. I'm somebody who goes to the gym most days of the week so the intensity of the exercise could mean that it dissolves more quickly it might last for eight months it really will depend on you your lifestyle how your body reacts to these kind of toxins so it's gonna be very interesting for me to play it out over the next couple of months to see how the movement starts to come back into my face and how quickly so now I've left you long enough I know you're all curious to know what the results are so let me zoom you in and show you from day one to now what kind of results we have seen Alright everybody, so now you are in way closer to my face than you want to be. Let's have a look at the results. I'm going to do three facial movements. I'm going to smile, I'm going to frown and I'm going to try and look really angry so that you can see how my face moves for those three movements. First off, I'm going to try and make a frown. That is me trying really, really hard to do a frown and you can see that there is no movement at all. My frown lines are completely gone. And so from day one to now, you can see that, that is a big difference because I was able to make some sort of a frown line still on that first day. If I try and scrunch up my face really hard and make a really angry face, you can see I'm really trying. Ah, I just can't, it cannot be done. And believe me, that is a miracle from above. I'm also just going to try and raise my eyebrows just to show you how much movement I have on my eyebrows. So I can still move my eyebrows. I still don't look like a crazy person because I still have some expression, but I cannot crinkle that forehead. And actually I'm delighted to say that the wrinkles that Linda said wouldn't go away have actually settled back into my skin and I no longer have them, which is absolutely amazing. And also that dent has filled out really, really well as well. I'm just going to do a big smile and you can see that there are no crow's feet there at all. They're completely gone. That area is entirely smooth. I'm sure there is a million and one things that I have forgotten to touch up on in this video, but I hope it was informative and gave you a good idea of what my experience is and how happy I am with my results and the decision I made to go ahead with the Botox. The only thing that I really want to say is, please make sure you're doing this for yourself. Nobody told me to get Botox. Nobody said, Sinead, you need to sort those wrinkles out. It was purely my own decision. Don't listen to what anybody else says. You are your own person and screw whatever taboo there is around cosmetic procedures. We are living in the 21st century, people. You do you. So that is it for this video, everybody. I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned a little bit about my experience. If you have any questions at all on something that I didn't touch upon, please do leave them in the comments section down below or I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out. Also, please don't forget to hit subscribe down below that big red button if you want to see more of my videos and I will talk to you in my next one. Bye.